Welcome to the Banerjee Family Garden. I'm excited to show you our garden. We're based out of New Jersey in uh, Zone 6B, and uh, our house is in uh, the beautiful hills of Bachang, in the township of Borden. Uh, I start with a video, a drone video that my son made earlier, to give you a sense of how we are placed. And uh, as you can see, a lot of what I'm showing you here is the garden towards the back end of our house as we drone out uh, a shot that drones out towards the front of the house. This is the main entrance where uh, we built an arbor with the intent to have it fill up with vines during the summer, late spring, early summer through fall. I planted these climbing roses uh, two years back and uh, while they've grown, it's the west side that grows a little better than the east side. We start with the Astilbees on the side porch of the house. Uh, this area is shaded by a Norwegian pine in front of the house. So I have to make do with uh, shade loving plants like the Hostas and the Astilbees, Bleeding Hearts and likes. Basically, uh, you know, these, these are flowering varieties but uh, they flower during spring. But uh, most of the interest really comes from the foliage. Towards the side of the house, as you see over here, are my summer lilies and my Asiatic lilies. Uh, the, the Asiatic lilies and the, uh, the summer lilies both uh, are, do tremendously well. It's just that uh, the deer seem to love that as well. So they come by during the evening or at night time and eat the buds. So it's a fight for survival that I'm still trying to figure out. At the moment, uh, because these uh, lilies at the back uh, the summer lilies have grown quite tall, it gets a little difficult for the deer to eat them as well. Towards the side of the house are these um, pots that we planted on a, a spruce that actually broke away during a tornado that hit us three years back. Not too severe, damaged the roof, um, but otherwise, you know, Meghna, my wife, uh, she had a good idea to plant these planters, ha have them hanging off the, the trunk. Uh, where we put in petunias and super bells and silver falls to make a very interesting uh, hanging uh, hanging pot. Uh, now these uh, hanging pots are uh, basically uh, put together by both of us, and um, they also have you know fl uh, flowers like the African daisy, which open up during the morning or when the sun comes up, and then uh, shuts down again when the sun sets. Uh, there are three of these, and but otherwise we also have similar pots towards the uh, back of the house that hang off the deck. Uh, this jasmine is quite interesting. I got this uh, a couple of years back, but it seems to weather the, the winter and it keeps coming back even though it's in a pot. Uh, so I decided to keep it and it looks nice, it smells nice and goes well with the, uh, with the decorator. We also have iceberg roses on the side of the house. Uh, these are now uh, close to around four years uh, old. Uh, I put them in together with the yellow roses as well as with the flowering quince and uh, the white hydrangea. Uh, these uh, have been growing really well. As, as you can see, that's the, uh, we have three gardens. This is the main garden. The main garden houses the bigger fence. The middle garden has the vine where I grow a lot of our gourds. And we also have the middle gardens, we have two, bus, uh, two beds on either side of the, the vine garden, uh, which I'll talk about later. And then towards the back of the house, we have three other beds. These beds are uh, right next to the deck. So I call them back garden as well as deck garden. Now going into our main garden, we have a siding towards the main garden where we planted potatoes and garlic. 
a little bit of an experiment to see how both of them do as a uh, you know companion uh, planting strategy and the the bed as well the soil is mostly straw along with a bed of uh, you know uh, just topsoil and compost carrots that i have towards the back end of the bed are also in its own uh, uh, you know uh, slightly deeper rooted uh, bed simply because carrots require that soft soil to be able to make straight uh, tap roots uh, so that's something which i'm trying uh, towards the end of the bed now those uh, beds that you see on the side that were for the, uh, made for the potatoes were done by Meghna. Uh, we repurposed a lot of the wood that was there in our initial beds that we actually had where our arbor was initially uh, that we uh, repositioned later. Towards the side you can see the melons. Uh, uh, the varieties are Hararas, Maduras and Kajari. Uh, all three are varieties that grow in India. Uh, you know, a lot of these seeds I've gotten from rareseeds.com, uh, which is quite the, the resource. This asparagus is five years old and has been growing ever since. We got a lot of asparagus this season, close to around, uh, so, you know, six to seven, um, uh, seven weeks of harvesting. Uh, the, the bed that I, that I have on towards the, the west side, which is on the right, is mostly uh, you know uh, your uh, leaf based veg vegetables at this time during spring with uh, varieties like lettuce and kale and uh, cabbages uh, broccoli cauliflower but as they grow and since it's summer right now i've started to take out the lettuce and then replace them with okra this is the east side uh, on my left uh, I put in a lot of zucchini, also towards the right, I mean both sides have uh, zucchini and uh, as I mentioned kajari melon towards the back. Uh, apart from you know the kajari melon at the back, uh, the beds on the east side towards the end are mostly peas as uh, three varieties, Oregon, Sugar Snap, Avalanche, Pod and Feasty Pod varieties. These are basically, uh, you know, I've structured them on a TP like structure so that they can uh, you know hold themselves on to the strings as well as the the stakes uh, i currently you know keep harvesting as much as i can so that you know they keep producing peas but as you can see behind the peas are the cucumbers and uh, you'll also notice or may or may not notice there are these uh, you know sweet uh, peppers that i've placed in between uh, the peas on either side of the peas so towards the the pathway as well as between the cucumber and the peas themselves uh, I'm not quite sure how it's going to work, but hopefully it does with the amount of sun that it gets, uh, you know, from in summer. And uh, between the peas and the cucumber and the uh, uh, sweet peppers are also the Malabar spinach towards the end and the three varieties of cucumber that I was talking about earlier uh, towards the back. Uh, now, the, on the other side are mostly eggplants and uh, the sweet peppers. So the sweet peppers sort of mirror each other on either side of the... The, the bed. The, cu uh, the eggplant varieties are mostly Nagasaki Long, Black Beauty and Hybrid Mini. Uh, I'm just trying out the Hybrid Mini for the first time but the Nagasaki Longs do uh, uh, grow very well. I also have Gangura or Roselle, uh, the flower that you can make tea with and Gangura you can make sour uh, leaves with to put in biryanis and things of that nature. Uh, the Mizuna are, uh, is the, uh, the mustard greens that we use to blend our smoothies, smoothies with every morning. Uh, alongside that is our snowball cauliflower, which I've been trying for the past five years. It's the first year that I'm able to grow them, possibly because I put in, uh, you know, uh, I prepared better or perhaps it's the weather, who knows. And then you have the broccoli that are growing quite well along with the cauliflower as well as the kohlrabi. So these are mostly, you know, your uh, early spring to late spring uh, varieties, which I'll probably harvest before summer. Uh, towards the end of the bed on the west is uh, our tatsoi, which uh, I also grow along with other cucumber varieties and uh, Baris shard. So this tastes a little bit like uh, spinach but then grows well in uh, the heat as well. Uh, the hibiscus that, that you see over there is the midnight hibiscus. It, it's uh, a perennial and comes back every year. Now in the middle garden uh, we have two beds like I was talking about earlier. On one bed, we have cherry tomatoes with sweetie, wild cherry, berries, crazy cherry, atomic grape, and ground cherries. Uh, basically, these cherries are, uh, you know, grow as vines and can, and many times because they propagate, they, they grow very quick, can also take over the structure behind. 
uh, so it go, grows with uh, the, the vines that I grow at the back, such as, you know, um, uh, bottle gourds and uh, your um, loofah gourds. But underneath, I'm growing these mustard greens and cabbages and things of that nature, which uh, is sort of like an experiment. These uh, are include pepper and cabbages and, uh, you know, yellow heart cabbages and uh, berries chard and, uh, you know, other types of, uh, you know, varieties. Now, going back to the deck garden, which is at the back, uh, I start with blueberries, which uh, I always seem to feed the deer with and the birds with. And then I have a catnip or cat mint, which is a good pollinator and tastes very well as well. Uh, next to the bed where I have peas along with hot pepper. So there are three beds. The first bed uh, along with the peas, the Oregon snap pea, are my hot pepper varieties. The, the hot pepper varieties are Bhut, Chilokia, Korean, uh, Greens, Aruna, Guntur and the likes. Uh, the beet, uh, as you can see over here, are the Detroit Red varieties. And the tomatoes on the left, uh, as you see, are the orange sherbet, yellow brandy wine, orange jazz, papa, and beef steak. A lot of these are going to grow during summer, so there's nothing to show you at this point. The first deck bed uh, that you see next to the deck is mostly garlic that we plant in the fall, as well as scarlet runner beans that grow up the structure as you see next to the deck. And on the deck, uh, we have these two pots, one with coleus and petunia and the other one with begonia and petunia. And uh, these are a little bit of a shade loving uh, variety, so I have them towards the shady side of the deck. And then the main decks are four, four of them with liatris, superbells and petunia, along with silver falls and some African daisies. This is the herb deck, so something which I use along with the, the grill station. We have oregano, we have uh, thyme, as well as rosemary, and then wheatgrass, which during spring I think uh, we mostly grow uh, coriander. The chamomile and the petunia, you know, closes out uh, the uh, rest of the flowers that we have on the deck. And this also concludes our video for this month, and I hope to come back to you next month with our summer harvest. Thank you.